Hi guys, I'm Sam, and I'm here with THA uh, to give you an appraisal of a new film that's out. Well, it's new to the U.S. market, I'm guessing, um, and it's called The Facility. It is uh, a film that came out, I guess, in 2011. It was done in 2011, but we're just now seeing it uh, released here in America. It is kind of a psychological horror film, um, and you really don't exactly know what to expect from the cover. Um, you've got this guy with kind of a... Uh, he's deformed in the face a little bit there. I don't know if you can see that. But you can see that he's got some gigantism in his um, <laughs> face. Um, and, you know, there's some blood and stuff, but really it describes... It's, it's a very short description. I'll, I'll just go ahead and read that. At a remote medical facility, a group of seven strangers begin a clinical trial for the experimental new drug Pro-9. As the untested drug begins to course through their veins, unexpected side effects start to take hold, and several of the volunteers are sent into an uncontrollable, murderous rage. All right. What do we think about immediately when we, when we hear about this kind of description? We think probably an infected person's type film like 28 days later maybe and judging by the back cover with the picture of the, fa the face with the gigantism okay maybe we were thinking about some <laughs> kind of stuff you know and infecting other people maybe maybe biting and running around crazy and tearing people up not really because they don't get loose and they're already injected, so I mean, it's not really like they have to go from person to person to inject it to infect them. So, first things first, this is not an infected person's movie. That's a plus for me. I, I have trouble getting into that kind of thing. But let me just say, it starts off with kind of a description of uh, what's going to happen. And it, it tells you that um, Procentrex Pharmaceuticals is going to be running a, running a trial test of a drug that they've got called Pro-9. Um, it doesn't give any description about what Pro-9 is for, why it's being tested. Um, so immediately it gives off the vibe that it's going to be sketchy. Okay. Um, so we have these volunteers. I think it takes place in London. And we have these volunteers that are, that are with us. And they come from varying backgrounds. Um, you know, you've got women of different ages. And you, you've got like a, a reporter. And you've got a girl that doesn't really do anything. Um, you've got a girl that's the uh, daughter of a pharmaceutical rep. Um, and then you've got some guys. You've got this guy that's kind of a muscle head. You've got this uh, old older guy that you can tell is kind of, he jumps from trial to trial, making money when he can. He's unemployed. Um, you've got a guy that's a, like a graduate student. And you've got... Uh, Oh, that's the other one. He's a oh, it's a guy that's uh, Middle Eastern or Indian. I, I'm not entirely sure which. Um, he's just kind of nervous, kind of a nervous guy. And right from the very beginning, you can tell he's very uncomfortable with the situation. Um, but the first third, I think, of the movie is what I'm thinking. We devote to figuring out these people uh, to let their personalities develop. And we as viewers can see kind of who we're dealing with. And that might be a little slow, I think. It just kind of... I, I kind of feel like it's a little slow for the length of the movie. I think that if the movie had been more like 90 to 100 minutes, we may have been safer with this length of a uh, get-to-know-you period. But... As it is, I, I think it was done well. I just... I'll get to the other stuff later. But I, I like the characters. I, I think that the acting was actually pretty well. I didn't really have any problems with it. Um, the medical staff is there, and they're not like over, over overly creepy. They 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 describe this as a double blind study, so they're not really in the know either. And they do a good job of selling that. I think they're just they're doing a job. Anyway, it's evident from the first night that we're gonna get. In, right into the story, um, right into the to the to the problem with the medication. So the first one, obviously, I think to be, it kind of goes in order of the one of 
the way people were injected. The first person to start showing symptoms of his uh, medical... The, per- the first person to start showing side effects, ill effects of this medication is the, the kind of muscle head, the jock. The, he's kind of a jerk. Um, he makes some kind of... You, know, you don't really like him that much, but I think you know that's he does a good job. The actor does a good job at at uh, presenting that that role. Um, I think his name's Jed, but uh, he starts he starts just screaming in pain. He starts kind of pulling his hair out and ripping at it, and it is you know going nuts. It's just he's in the middle of the night, he's screaming, convulsing, you know, and you're like, what's wrong with this guy? You know, is he uh, burning or what? But he just starts hurting a lot. Um, so they take him kind of the doctors take him to sedate him and they say oh, it's a side effect and it may not affect everybody like this but the next person to be affected almost immediately he wakes up like very shortly later uh, just shortly thereafter is the the guy that's the Middle Eastern or Indian guy named Arif and he wakes up really super nervous uh, kind of starts kind of messing with himself walks around the facility and then it kind of just cuts to oh crap Arif comes back to the group and he has hurt somebody. He's got blood all over himself. So, immediately the rest of the subjects now know that something bad is happening and they probably don't want to take part in this trial anymore, this medical trial. So they go and they try to find the doctor and when they find the doctor, they find out the doctor's dead. And, well, he's not hes not dead when they find him, but he's, he's half alive, which is very cool. Very good effects. You know, his head's kind of split open and I think... You know, I, I think that the makeup and effects for this are very good. You don't, there's no CG that I know of. I can't see any CG when I watch this movie, and I like that, the practical effect. So, good job, the facility, for giving us real effects. I enjoy that. And I think a lot of true horror, I think a lot of the, the, oh, what are we, nostalgic? The, the nostalgic horror fans, we, we appreciate the practical horror effects. So, thank you. Um, and then the Night Watchman gets killed, and it's like, okay, so we've just got the group of people that are given the the medication. That's all that's left. So, you know, gradually, one by one, these people are going to fuck up and just kind of get, you know, fall into this madness rage where they want to kill people. Crap. That sucks. So... What they end up doing is they they can't really get out, so it's one of those facilities that locks itself down. And they, the one guy that has a car, his keys are locked up, or his keys are on one of the guys that's crazy. So they end up locking themselves selves in like the pharmacy area, and they get the bright a couple of them get the bright idea to to you know, as they get, as they start exhibiting exhibiting signs of rage, they just kind of tranquilize them. Okay. But that doesn't really seem like a logical idea. But the next one to be to turn is this girl that's nineteen. She's blonde. She's she's your typical airhead kind of. But she's she's not. I don't think she's an airhead. I think she's a girl that just doesn't know who she is. And I think she's kind of a sad character for me. But uh, there's a, the older guy that's unemployed. Kind of wants to just kill her and get rid of her. But he he he's the next one to get in, to start showing signs. So he's kind of not really with it anyway, but he wants to kill this girl. He wants to get her rid of her so he doesn't have to worry about her going crazy. But they just kind of lock her up. They put her outside of the room and just let her go so that they don't have to kill her. Um, I'm sorry if I'm being confusing. It's, it's just big. It's kind of a, a lot of detail. I understand, but... Um, a couple of times... You've got the people go out and they they look for things trying to to figure out how to get out of here and you know one by one you've got people turning and and you've got one guy that was a placebo and he makes it with the last one to turn the last girl to turn makes it with him to find the surviving member of the the medical trial group. And, of course, that guy won't help. He says the trial's not over, so I can't open the door. I can't help you. I can't do anything for you. And the last girl turns, and, um, you know, from there, 
I won't spoil it for you. But long story short, um, the medi- the the effects of this medication wear off 17 hours after administration. And so at the end of the movie, you're left with a bunch of crazy people that are no longer crazy, but they're covered in blood. They've damaged themselves. One guy, uh, give me a second. Sorry, sorry. But, you know, they're left with this kind of chaos that happened and they can't do anything about it now. Um, it says, the movie says, none of them were prosecuted and all this. It's really abrupt the way it happens. Boom. All of a sudden, the medication's effects wear off. Jed, the first guy that it was affected all of a sudden you know he kind of comes in and he sits down and he's like I've done bad things and he's got blood all over him and stuff and I'm I'm watching the end of this film and I'm just kind of like I want more I wanted to see everybody die I'm a horror fan come on maybe that makes me sick but I think that stands for kind of what you're going to see from a lot of horror fans watching the facility so what I will say there are some cool things that happen. Like, for instance, Arif, the guy, kind of pulls his scalp down over his face, you know, and it's, it's a really tragic thing. You know, he's pulling his hair out. He's like, ah, you know, and he just, he screams. He's the guy that screams the whole time. But <sighs> things that this movie has going for it. It's an interesting story. It's a unique story. It's not, uh, it's not another found footage film. Um, it's not an infected person's film. Um, I think it's interesting, and it doesn't use any CG effects. So, what do I say about grading this film? I would say, um, B minus, B maybe. It's an interesting film. I like it a lot. There's some good effects. Um... The acting, I think, is actually pretty good. I don't think the acting's really that flawed. I think that uh, we have a fresh cast and crew that I haven't been exposed to much. Um, I don't know. If, I don't know if I've ever seen any of these people actually. So that's kind of a good thing in horror films. You know, when you get that, you like you like seeing fresh faces and people that that you can kind of discover. But um, I can I can say that I would recommend the facility. If you can get cheaper than actually, you know, what you would find in a store, uh, if you can find it for a deal, do that. Um, but I don't, I'm not exactly sure what I paid for this. Uh, the price wasn't listed on it. I hope I didn't pay like $25 for it or something. I would probably pay 15, 10 to $15 for this. Um, so yeah, I, I would endorse this film. I would say check it out. It is very creative. And uh, it's something new for horror fans. So, again, I'm Sam for the horror appraisal, and uh, I'll be catching you later. Have a good day.